Zim Zalabim. So now you're rapping to the five member girl group Red Velvet in their 2019 release Zim Zalabim. The song writing duo Cesar and Louis originally wrote this song after hearing Girls Generation's I Got a Boy. Do you remember that song? No. Are you looking up I Got a Boy? Hey yo, GG! Let me put it down another way. Yeah, I do remember this. It was like oh. a meme. Yi Suman, which is SM CEO, dug this song out of the vault for Red Velvet, saying he felt that they were ready to conquer this arrangement. Through the lyrics, the group is encouraging people to follow their dreams. Simzala Bim is an incantation to help those dreams come true. Oh. The song is composed by Olaf Linskod, Daniel Caesar, Ludwig Lindell, and Haley Aitken. Beep beep! Ooh. That drum though. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm not ready for this. <laughs> Ooh, that that's the ascending chromatic line that you were like, we never hear ascending chromatic lines. Yeah. We just heard it. Ooh, I like the snare, very marching band. I love the like, this is gonna sound weird, but like the texture of the sound, like, like that, like it's very, like I feel like, or I hear that I can almost feel that, if that makes sense. Oh, oh my goodness. Jesus. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> wow. Okay, now the bubbly section appears out of order. Do they kind of hear that when they're like, Ear. it's like almost like, I don't know how to describe it other than like very draggy. Like they're like, it's like you're pulling it to each note. Yeah. I just think it's interesting to look at songs like this uh, in terms of the harmony because they're so clearly meant to be listened to and you think about the drums, but there's more that goes into it. It's cool that they're, they're playing with their registers too because like everything in, in the verses and, and the pre-chorus is super, super high, talking and singing, and then they drop to like their lowest notes for this. What is that saxophone about? I haven't heard a saxophone. Yeah, I was saxophone. like, I haven't heard a saxophone yet. Yeah, You're lying to my soul. And then this? What the heck? What is going on? Why? Whoa. Oh, what a bridge. What a change. Okay, go off. The contrast between her voice, the soloist voice, and like the background singers oh. being all floaty and like... It's so forward. Yeah. That's amazing. Ooh, this is so interesting. It's not like, like they're not like low register, like, like grunging it out. It's very like preppy again, like in a higher register and like all of them shouting it. Meanwhile. Oh. Why are we here? What is the meaning of this? What is the, what is my purpose? Don't wander aimlessly so far away. Well, this song is. Well. <laughs> Ah, help. <laughs> oh, she didn't go What's up. What's with the slap bass? Where's the, what does the Where slap is this going? <laughs> oh, this time, I just, I somehow, my monkey brain has just noticed now, the Zim Zalabim is now in their high register. Yeah, I think the intensity like keeps, Rising and rising, rising after every repetition of. It's represented in their hands. That emotions. chromatic oscillation. Ah! Well, that was exciting. That okay. was like a fever dream. So, what does Zimzalabim mean? It's like abracadabra. 
Oh, okay, cool. Magical word. That was interesting because they were playing with like different percussion instruments. Because you had like the sort of I loved that like big bass drum kind of drumming at the beginning, and then they they did the snare drum, and then they did like the sort of like hot gong thing in the chorus, and then you know they did like the wood block in the bridge. So they really like covered a lot of ground with the percussion, but then they changed it per every section of the song. I also appreciate that Zim's album, like Abracadabra, is just kind of like one of those. It's because it doesn't have like a specific definition. It's just sort of like a nonsense word. It is used in like a really percussive way. And it matched up very well with the percussive elements that they used. Thought that was really clever. I struggled sometimes with these because like I don't know if I should react to it from a songwriting perspective or like from a production perspective. Because from a songwriting perspective, like I wouldn't listen to it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh, this is a good song. But sitting here watching it, listening to it, thinking about its construction. Holy, oh my mother of... That's sick. They used so much range in terms of like highs and lows that it was hard to really pay attention to anything else. I think that's a song that would be unsafe to drive to. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. It's like, and so it's like you can't even pay attention. Like, it's like it's like your eyes are closed when you're listening to that kind of music <laughs> like that. It just puts you in a trance. And I don't know. There's something to be said for that, certainly. So that was cool, I guess. That no, I didn't really like it. But I mean, that's what a React channel is about, right? Did I like it or not? I did. Why think, did you not like it? Maybe it's because you were in my ear the whole time. But like, do you hear? Do you hear that dragon <laughs> sound? I'm like, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I hear that. It was so. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was a bit much. I think it stood out, and then it happened a lot after it stood out. Oh my goodness! You just go up and down. And then you have this this chant. It's the Reve Festival, indeed. How do you pronounce that? Yeah, Reve. Reve. It's well, like red velvet, but Reve. Yes. Also, Rev means dream in French, so it's the Dream Festival. What the? What am I supposed to say about this? Oh my goodness! I was. It sounds very weird. I've never been so alienated from just the chorus. But I do have to say, there's a lot of great stuff going on in there. The verses are very nice. There's a lot of good instruments. A very good snare is just wow. I like good snares. But everything else was so weird. This actually happened. I like a song that feels like Whiplash. I really do. But I think. Mm, I don't know about the red flavor esque bubbly section. I think it appears a little too frequently. So it makes the song more grounded in tonality and that type of, you know, girl group vibe, and yet less grounded at the same time because of everything else that's happening. It's in this really weird limbo state. I don't know what I would switch it with, but something less bubbly, but all, but gives us that comfort. I think I do like everything else that's going on. I, and I like how in the final chorus, the the yeah, the zipper bass and the zimzinla zimzala bim come together. And I like how they chant it higher. It doesn't feel like they're chanting it over and over again because they're just slapping it on. It does feel like the song is more powerful because of the way it repeats. It doesn't ever, I never, never during the Zimzala Bim sections do I feel like, oh, I'm getting tired of this. I do commend them for doing that, what, what they do, but the bubbly section doesn't sit with me mm. as well, That's weirdly true. enough. I think the minor third that was playing in the, uh, like, what was it, like a cowbell or something, you know? That like instrument while the Zimzala Bim was happening, like I feel like it was just a little bit out of tune so that you like listen and you're like, Excuse me? Well, and especially, you know, that boa wee, that like weird kind of sound effect that they were using that was like sliding between pitches. I couldn't figure out what the pitches were until the major section at the end. And I think the out of tuneness is part of the reason because before, you know, it, it was like something weird harmonic. I was singing like flat six or like something weird. And then at the end, it was all major and it was just one five one like it was just like super simple and yeah. easy but i think that like out of tuneness that we heard in the beginning sort of like you know even people who aren't musically trained can hear that and they're like yeah huh? no. i want to add that like the out of tune like we're, we're not just being assholes like it's intentional it's a choice yeah. and like that because even like people who aren't musically trained like they know when something's out of tune even if they don't have the word to say out of tune they'll be like that's 
weird. Yeah, I was getting very witchy yeah. vibes. Yeah, and I think happy it's, Halloween, bitches. I think it's really cool that they just came up with like Zim Zalabim. It's so absurd, but it's so catchy. It's, <laughs> it's just so like abracadabra. It's like, yeah. who came up with that? It's actually you know? a saying in, in Europe. Oh, really? Oh, that's cute. I didn't know that. A few moments later. So I just went, like I listened back to it and I figured out what it is in the beginning. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So the pitches are, it's one and then they sort of go up to a five, but not really. It's like one, uh, and then they go to the octave, and then they come down to the flat two. One, e oh. and I think that's like really smart because that's not usually something you hear. All of those like half step, like neighbor to establish musical tension and dissonance tones would be like four, you know, or flat six. You know, we hear that a lot. Flat six to five, four to three, but flat two to one. That's like really interesting. And I think that's part of the reason that it's jarring. And then with the ambient noise of the bells, it's just like, whoa, what's happening? Yeah, because yeah, you know? it's so hard like when there's like ambient noise to establish like tonality in your brain. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, there's just stuff going on. It's really good. Clink, 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 clink,